Hello and welcome. I'm Raghav and welcome to this complete beginners masterclass on Cyprus. This is going to be a complete course on Cyprus and I will start from scratch and we will go up step by step. So do not worry if you are a complete beginner, do not worry if you have never worked with Cyprus or even with any automation tool or platform, I will teach you everything from scratch and we will go up step by step. So in this masterclass, in this session, uh, we will start uh, with the very basics of Cyprus and uh, I will teach you what is Cyprus, why do we use it, how do we get uh, get Cyprus, install it, and there will be demos and examples. I will also share some links for quizzes that you can do and you can test your knowledge. So uh, let's get started and first let us see the topics that we are going to cover in this master class. We will start with what is Cyprus and then we will uh, see the prerequisites we need and we will do the installation and setup on our systems. You can follow this on Windows or Mac operating system. Uh, I will tell you what are the IDEs, that is integrated development environments you can use for uh, scripting the test cases or creating a project on Cypress. And then we will uh, start with the project. We will learn about object locators. What are object locators? How do we uh, create object locators in Cypress? We will learn Cypress with JavaScript and TypeScript. Now Cypress uses JavaScript and any programming language that can transpile down to JavaScript can be used. For example, TypeScript can, uh, can be transpiled to JavaScript. So any language that can transpile to JavaScript that can be used to script test cases in Cypress. Uh, then we will look at assertions. What are assertions? What are the verifications and checks that we can use in Cypress? How do we use it? Uh, we will learn about page object model design. How do we create a page object model framework in Cypress? And we will also look at what are app actions and how does app actions differ from page object model? Then we will learn how do we group tests and how do we run groups of tests? We will learn about the command line execution and the command line interface. We will see what is package.json. We are going to create a node project for Cypress. Uh, and there we will have a very important file that is package.json. We will learn about it. We will see how do we uh, read and write files in Cypress. How do we upload and download files with Cypress? We will look at the reportings. How do we uh, generate reports? How do we use reports in Cypress? We will look at API testing. How can we do API testing in Cypress? And then we will see some custom commands. What are custom commands? How can we create custom commands in Cypress? We will look at Cypress Studio. What is Cypress Studio? How do we use it? And Cypress dashboard. And uh, we will see a Cypress BDD framework using Cucumber. How can we create a Cypress BDD Cucumber framework? And then we will see how can we integrate database in Cypress. And then we will see how can we put our project on a Git repository? How can we do source code management using Git? And finally, we will see CI CD with Jenkins. So this is going to be the agenda. This is, this is, these are the topics that we are going to cover. And you can follow along with me with hands-on. This is going to be very easy and very interesting. By the end of this masterclass, you will have knowledge on all these topics. You will be able to create a complete framework, automation framework with Cypress. I'm going to use the latest version of Cypress. So you will see all the latest versions, uh, all the latest things in Cypress. Uh, and whenever you are stuck, whenever you have any questions, any issues, you can let me know. I will suggest that whenever you face any challenges, any issues, at first, please try to Google and search for some solutions. You will always get some resources. You will always get pointers. And that is how you will learn. That is how I have learned. And that is how you can also learn. And that will be the best way to learn. And eventually, if you are still facing some issues and you are not getting any solution online, you can uh, put your question in the comments or the Q&A section of this video. And I will try to answer you as soon as I can. I read all my questions, all the messages that you sent to me and I answer everyone. So you can let me know, but please do some kind, some analysis, some research on your own because that is the way you will learn. And with that, uh, let's begin a little bit about myself. I'm Raghav, I'm the founder of automation.stepbystep.com. This is the website. I'm a teacher, I teach on topics related to automation, testing, DevOps and uh, CI. 
I have been an automation architect and a lead. I do corporate trainings. So this is the website, just in case you want to see uh, Cypress and other topics that I teach on, you can go to this link, this website, automationstepbystep.com. And here you can see all the topics. So you can also see there is a Cypress playlist that I created earlier. Now this has uh, single videos for every topic. So if you are somebody who learns better with you know, small videos dedicated to each topic, then you can also learn from here. This is a complete beginner's Cypress playlist. And uh, you can see all these Cypress videos here. So you can learn from here too. And you can find all my work here. Okay. So with that, let's get started and let us see what is Cypress. So uh, Cypress is a test automation tool and you can test anything with Cypress that runs on a browser. So basically it is a JavaScript testing framework. However, uh, it does not matter whether your web application is built on JavaScript or any other technology, anything that runs on a web browser can be tested with Cypress. And in Cypress, you can write tests with JavaScript or TypeScript. Now. Uh, basically, it uses JavaScript, but any language that can transpile down to JavaScript, like TypeScript, can be used for Cypress. And it does not use Selenium. This is a very important difference. Uh, you know, a lot of automation tools use Selenium at the backend, but that is not the case with Cypress. In fact, if you go to the uh, Cypress website, which is cypress.io, and here, uh, if you go to the documentation. I'm showing you all this documentation and resources so that uh, just in case if there are some changes later on after recording this video, you can always uh, see the latest documentation. So if you go to FAQ section here, so you can see all the documentation is here, all the learning resources are here. If you go to the FAQ section, you can see here. Uh, uh, so let me show you, there is, there is a FAQ on Selenium. I think it will be in general questions. Yes. So there is a question, does Cypress use Selenium WebDriver? And you can see, no, in fact, Cypress architecture is very different from Selenium in a few critical ways. And you can see why it is different or uh, why, uh, what is the advantage of using Cypress over Selenium? And you can see Cypress runs in the context of the browser that is, Cypress runs in the same browser where your application is running. So it is very faster than Selenium or uh, you know any automation tools which run outside the browser. And here you can see uh, it is faster whereas Selenium runs outside the, the browser. Uh, with Selenium, we have 100% simulated events. That is with Selenium, uh, the events are or simulated with Cypress, we get both. So you can read this just in case you want to uh, understand more, but basically Cypress does not use Selenium and it is open source. So you can get it free and it is open source. You can use it. There is a, a priced version that is Cypress dashboard. I will tell you about that later. I will tell you what all you can do with Cypress dashboard. But if you have to use Cypress in your projects, if you have to create an automation framework or project with Cypress, you can start free on it. And this is the website that I have already shown you, cypress.io. So this is Cypress. And as I told you, Cypress test runs with JavaScript code or with JavaScript. So any language that transpiles to JavaScript can be used. So you can directly use JavaScript or you can use languages like TypeScript, which transpiles down to JavaScript. So this is Cypress. Let us now see how to use Cypress. Okay, to uh, use Cypress, there are uh, four basic steps. First, we will set up the test, then we will uh, write the test. So set up test means we will set up the, the project, we will get all the required libraries, then we will write our test, we will run our test, and then uh, in case there are any failures, any issues, we can debug the test. So these are the four basic things that we do in Cypress setup, write tests, run tests, and debug. If I talk about the browsers which are supported in Cypress, so we have all these browsers. We have Chrome or 
all the Chromium Brave based browsers, Firefox, Edge, Electron, Brave. You can use any of these browsers. And uh, you can also go to this link that is the Cypress documentation on browsers. So you can see what are the browsers supported at this particular time whenever you are watching this video. So if you just go to, if I go to Cypress browsers, uh, you can see launching browser. This is coming from the Cypress documentation. And here you can see all the list of browsers. So you can always check what is the latest uh, list at your time and you can check from here. Okay. And uh, when we will start Cypress, when we will install and start the project, you will see that whenever we start Cypress, you will see on the Cypress application, you will see there will be a browser drop down list and this will detect all the browsers on your operating system and then you can select any browser from here. So this you will see once we start working with Cypress. And if I talk about the features, so uh, here we have time travel. So uh, time travel is as we run Cypress, it will take snapshots of the application of every page that we go through. And in the Cypress application or the Cypress test runner, we can actually see, we can go back and see each and every snapshot. So this is time time travel. And as we will work with Cypress, I will tell you uh, practically how it looks like. Then we have uh, debuggability. So Cypress has great features for debugging. Uh, whenever you have got any issues, you will see in the Cypress app, in the Cypress test runner, you will see all the details, what exactly is the issue from where it is coming, the exact line in your test case, in your script from where it is thrown. And you can see the cor corresponding screenshot of your web application. So it has some very good features for debugging. Uh, there are automatic weights. So uh, whenever we run any commands in Cypress, it can be a click, it can be, uh, you know, add some uh, text or anything. So there are some inbuilt weights added in Cypress, which we can always override if you want to create our custom weights, like how many seconds we want to wait or what should be the timeout, we can do that. But even if you do not do that, there is a automatic weight enabled in Cypress. Then we have consistent results. So uh, in automation, you will see that sometimes when we run the same test case, sometimes it passes, sometimes it fails. Uh, where there are no changes from the backend, there are no application changes, but still we will see some inconsistency in the results. And that can be because sometimes, you know, uh, uh, the objects are not loaded properly or the page is not loaded. It takes some time and, uh, you know, all the objects are not loaded, loaded at the same time. So things like that happen. However, in Cypress, you will see very consistent results. Uh, it works directly in the browser where your application is running. So it is pretty fast and it has, uh, you know, very good features. It has, it can take care of all the time, uh, the loading time, the time it takes for all the objects to come on the screen. So all that is there and you will see it is very fast and very consistent. Uh, then we get all the screenshots and videos as well. So when you run your test cases, if you want to see screenshots, if you want to see the videos, we have all that features in Cypress and we can do cross browser testing. We can do CI CD, we can use CI tools, all that we can do with Cypress. So these are some uh, basic features of Cypress and coming to now with Cypress, you can do uh, all type of testing. You can create end-to-end -end tests. You can create integration tests. You can create unit tests. So whatever is your requirement, you can do this uh, with Cypress. Coming to the prerequisites that you will need for Cypress. If I talk about the operating system, you will need Windows 7. In case of Windows, we need Windows 7 and above, 64-bit operating system. If you're using Mac OS, it should be 10.9 or above. Let me show you, this is my Windows system. And you can go to, if you are on Windows, you can go to uh, here, Windows, and go to this PC or my computer, do a right click and go to properties. And here you can check your operating system. So you, it will give you all the information about your operating system. So I have this one, 64-bit uh, operating system. 
the RAM, the memory, the processor, all information is here. In case you are on Mac, you can go to this Apple icon and go to about Mac. And here you can see all the details about your Mac, the processor, the memory, the operating system version, all that you can see here. So this is the operating system. You can also use Linux. You can say use Linux Ubuntu 12.04 and above and Fedora 21 and Debian 8 operating system, all 64 bit. And then we will also need Node.js. So we will need Node.js 10 or 12 and above. And for that, you can go to, you can go to your system and go to the command line. If you are on Mac, you can go to the terminal and you can search for node space hyphen V. Uh, you can write this command, run this command and check. And you can also say NPM space hyphen V. Now, if you're getting the version number as the output of this command, that means node is added on your system. NPM is the node package manager, which comes along with node. So once you install node, you will also get NPM. You can also or say node space hyphen hyphen version. This is the, uh, also this will give you the same result. Now, just in case node is not present on your system, if you're on Mac, you will run the same commands on terminal. So let me show you if you are, if I go to my terminal, I will say node space hyphen V and npm space hyphen v this will show the version of node and node package manager and just in case you do not have node you can go to your browser so i'm going to my browser and just say node.js download and this will take you to this node.js.org.en uh, hyphen en hyphen download this link and here you can select your operating system. Let us say Windows. You can get the Windows installer and it will install as a .msi file and that you can run and install Node.js. So let me show you if I open this file, downloaded file, it is here and you will just run it as any other executable file. It will start the installation wizard. So you can see here go to next you can read and then accept the license agreement click next you can select what folder you want to use for node.js say next and make sure that you have this add to path checked and enabled so that it will add to your path environment variables you can do next and say next and then click on install. Now I already have it. So I will just click cancel and it will install Node.js on your system. And once you have installed, open a new instance of the command prompt or terminal. So if you try to check on the older command prompt that you have opened, it will not have the new session. So open a new command prompt and then check for the commands, node space hyphen V and npm space hyphen v and you will get node on your system so this is the these are the prerequisites and if you want you can always check the latest prerequisites or system requirements for cypress on this link so you can just go to your browser and search for cypress system requirements and you can see here this is the link where you can see all the details installing cypress and it will show you all the system requirements so let me search for system yes it is here system requirements and you can see all this operating system then node.js you can also see the hardware requirements um, generally whatever system you are using you should be able to use cypress on that so you can see the cpu and memory so you should have a 4 gb minimum and 8 gb plus for longer runs and here two CPUs minimum to run Cypress, one addi additional CPU if video recording is enabled. So all this will help you uh, just to check if you are ready with the infrastructure. You can also see the Linux properties, system properties and requirements. So all this you can check here. So this was Cypress prerequisites. And 
I hope with this, we are ready to start with Cypress. Let us look at the IDE. Okay. Now IDE is integrated development environment and it is a platform where we can create our project and it gives us a complete environment where we can add all the libraries, all the softwares, we can create a project structure, we can add all our project files and folders. It, give, it can give us some more options like, uh, you know, uh, it can give us some more plugins. We can write our code. It can give us IntelliSense and code completion features. So basically we get a, a platform for our project creation and execution. Now for Cypress, you can use Visual Studio Code, you can use IntelliJ, Eclipse, you can use uh, a lot of IDEs. Now in this session, I'm going to go with Visual Studio Code. And just in case you are completely new to Visual, Visual Studio course, Code or VS Code, and you have never used VS Code, do not worry, I will tell you step by step. I also have a separate video, which I will give the pointers to. So here, uh, if I go to this link, visualstudio.com download, you can get Visual Studio from here. So you can go to your browser and just say VS Code download, and this will take you to this link. And here you can download for your operating system. So if you're on Windows, you can download the Windows installer. And uh, here, you can get the system installer or user installer is also fine. User installer means it will work for the current user on that particular system. System installer will get installed at a system level and it will be available to all the users of that system. So you can get any of these. So let's say we get this system installer and you can see it will get downloaded as a .exe and then you just have to run this .exe you can see this is a application file. You can run this and it will run the installer and you can read the agreement and then say next, say next and click on install. It will install VS code on your system. Okay, as of now, I'm just canceling this. Uh, if you go to my website, that is automationstepbystep.com. And if you go to, if you scroll down, you will see a section for, yes, it is here, IDE and editors. And here I have a playlist for VS code. And this will take you to my YouTube playlist. And here I have uh, created videos on what is VS code, VS code beginner tutorial, learn VS code in seven steps, Windows and Mac. And I also have one more video for using Git and GitHub on VS code. So if you are completely new, complete beginner on VS code, you can watch the first two videos and this will help you to set up VS code on your system and get started with VS code. And here are the steps. So uh, once you have got VS code, you can uh, see all the GUI and all this is covered in this uh, in these videos, in these two videos. So you can watch that. Let me start VS code on my system. So I will say, I will start Visual Studio code. So here, uh, there are four sections, four basic sections in VS code. The first one is the activity bar here. So this is the activity bar. And here you can see options like Explorer. And this will, uh, if you click here, it will show you all the folders and the subfolders, basically your entire project structure, your project folder here. Then there is a search. In case you want to do any search, you can do here. We have this source control section. So this is for using source code management. And whenever you are using any tools like Git, and any source code management you can do from here. There is a run and debug section, and then there is a extensions or plugins section. So here you can search for any extensions and add to your VS code. And then, 
I'm actually uh, going to start with a complete new VS code uh, so that just in case, uh, you know, I, I start from scratch. So if you need any extensions, anything I can show you. So in my existing VS code, there may be some extensions already added. So I'm just going to my control panel or I'll just go to add or remove programs and I will remove VS code from my system and I will get a new one. So I'll search for Visual Studio Code and I'm going to uninstall this. And I will say yes, uninstall. And that's it. Uh, I will also remove any folder from my C. Let me see program files. Do I have anything on VS Code? Or I will be, I'll go to users my user and here let me see if i have yeah we i have this dot vs code this may contain the extensions i already have so you can see some extensions are there so i will get rid of this i'll remove this so that i can start with fresh vs code i'm going to remove this as well i'm going to delete this so this is done and now I will go to the installer that I had downloaded. I'll go to my downloads folder and I will install VS code from scratch. So I'll say next, this will go to C program files. Just in case you want to change the location, you can say browse. And let's say I want to put it in my, let us say E drive tools because I have some extra space on that drive. So I'm putting it there and I'll say next. If you want, you can also create a desktop icon. Uh, keep this checked, add to path. So this will add to the path environment variables and then click on install. So this will start the installation and we will get, a, we will get VS code set up and installed on our system. And I will say finish. It has uh, launched VS Code is already checked. So I will click on finish and it should start VS Code. You can also see a desktop icon is created here. So yes, now we have got this VS Code and this is the activity bar where we have seen all these sections. And then uh, this is the top menu where you can see file and edit, selection, view, go, run, terminal, help, etc. So you can see all this here. And then there is there are editors. So whenever you go to Explorer from the activity bar, and whenever we open the folder or any file inside that folder from this uh, activity bar or this Explorer, its corresponding editor will open in this editor window. So this is the editor window where the files will open. And then at the bottom, there is a status bar. So let me show you here. At the very bottom, you will see the status bar. Uh, I will show you this. I will resize the window so that you can see the status bar properly. Yes. So here at the bottom, this is the status bar. Here you can see some warnings or any problems. If there are any problems, you can see here. Uh, you can also see some notifications. You can see your uh, user profile if you have logged in any notifications and some other things can also come here. This is the settings. From here, you can go to settings and you can search for anything in the settings and do, do the setup here. So these are the basic GUI interface of VS Code. And we can go to command palette, which is control shift P. You can go from here or you can also go from uh, let me show you, you can go from view command palette and here you can type anything and it will show you the matching options. So if I say extensions, all the matching options with extensions come here. If I say open or let us say, I will say, uh, I can say, 
whatever you want to search here, you can do that. Okay, I'll have to remove this. And then I'll have to, because it is taking the earlier option, I will again say run and whatever you type here, terminal, you can see all the matching options. So this will be a good way just to go directly to that particular option or settings. So now we will open a folder and then we will, we can create a file at the extensions and create and run the code. So we can do all this with our Cypress project. So let us go to the Cypress project setup. So here, step number one is we should have Node.js on our system. And step number two is we should have a IDE like VS code in our case. We have done all this. We have done both of these. And step number three is we will create a new folder for our Cypress project. And then we will open the folder in VS code. So let's do that. You can go to anywhere on your system and create a folder for Cypress project. Uh, I will go to my, I will go to eDrive. I have more space here. I can go to projects and I'm just going to create a folder called Cypress or I have already have this folder Cypress project. Let me go inside this Cypress project. Uh, there is a, this is a already a project. So let me just create a new folder here. I will call this as Cypress and inside this, I will create Cypress project. I'm calling this Cypress project one. You can call it anything. So just create a folder, give it a name and this you will have to open in VS code. Now to open it in VS code, you can just directly drag and drop the folder like this. I can select drag and drop the folder in VS code like this or you can go to file on VS code and say open, open folder. And then you will have to browse the folder on your system and then select the folder. Or if there is nothing opened here, you, you will have this option open folder and you can use this. So you can also directly go from here. This will again take you to browse the folder on your system and you can just go and browse the folder and say select folder, it will get opened in VS code. And here there is a message. If you trust the author of the files in this folder, I will say yes. And you can see the Cypress folder is here opened. As of now it is empty. It does not have anything inside any files or folders. There are nothing inside. So it is an empty folder. So now we will open the terminal and run the command npm init minus y. So this command will start a node project inside this folder. And this you can do outside VS code as well. If you want to do it outside, you can do that. You can just go to your command prompt and navigate to the folder. So this is my folder. This folder, I will copy the location. And because this is on E drive and command prompt is on C drive. First, I will change the drive to E and then I will say CD space, the path of the folder hit enter. And here I can run the command NPM in it minus Y or the other way is if you directly want to open the location of this folder on command line, you can directly go here to the folder location and on this address bar, say CMD and hit enter. It will start command prompt on the same folder. So this is a shortcut on windows. However, because we are using VS code, we can directly use the terminal of VS code and we can run all the commands there. So you can press control J on your keyboard to start the terminal or you can press, uh, you can go to this terminal and say new per terminal. You can also press control shift and the back tick key. This is a key uh, at the top left of your keyboard, just below the escape key. So you can use this or just go to terminal, new terminal. It will start a terminal here. So you can see this has started. Just in case you want to change the font size, anything, you can always go to settings. And here you can say, font and you can see all this fonts here. So all that you can do from here. 
So now uh, let me also expand this window. Okay. And you can click on this button to expand the terminal window. So I'll click here and we have got this terminal and you can see this terminal opens on the same folder that is opened on your VS code. So we do not have to change the folder here. And now we can run the command npm init minus y. You can also say npm init. And if you say this, you will be asked some questions and you will have to say yes or no. But if you just say minus y, that means you have already agreed and uh, you have given the answer yes. And this will start and this will basically create a package.json file in your project folder. So you can see this package.json file is created. If you go and check, you can see here, it gives you some information about your project, the name, the version, you can change this. By default, it gives version 1.0.0. You can give some description. And then there are some scripts. We will learn what is the use of this script section later. And then whenever you add any uh, library, any dependency in your project, you will see the list here it will get added here in package.json. So this will also be very handy whenever you take this project to any other system, you just have to run this package.json. You have to uh, you know, uh, use this file and it will install all the dependencies required for this project. So it is very much similar to uh, pom.xml file that we have for Java projects. So similarly, this is node project and we have package.json file. So we have done step number five. Now to install Cypress, we will say npm install Cypress. So I will go again to the terminal and I will say npm install Cypress. And now you will see because we have started a node project under this folder, everything that we run, all the install commands that we run in this folder, these libraries will get installed within this local folder only, and it will not get installed globally on the system. So we can keep this within this folder, all our project, all our dependencies within this project. Now, if you say npm install Cypress, this will install the latest version of Cypress. In case you want to install a specific version, you can also say at, and then give some version number like this. Otherwise, when you say npm install Cypress and hit enter, it will install the latest version of Cypress. And once Cypress is installed, you will also see its entry in the package.json file. So let's wait for Cypress to get installed and yes. So here, this is done. Uh, if I go and check package.json, you can see under the dependencies, we have got this Cypress. I will tell you what is the significance of this caret symbol. Sometimes you will see a twiddle symbol here. What is What does this mean? We will have a session for pom.xml, uh, sorry, for package.json file. So I will tell you everything about this. So as of now, we have got Cypress installed and you can also run the command npx Cypress v. npx is used to run the npm commands locally on the system. So if I say npx, uh, I will say, let me expand the terminal, npx cypress hyphen v. This should show us the version of cypress and you can see this shows us all the details. I can also say, uh, npx cypress verify. So this will check everything is fine with cypress and all the dependencies, all the required libraries, everything is there and we are ready to use cypress. Now cypress verify also gets executed when we open cypress. So that will get executed at the backend. But if you want, you can explicitly run this command npx cypress verify and this will tell you if everything is fine with the Cypress installation in your project folder. 
So this can take some time to verify. And just in case, uh, see, we, are, we have got this issue, Cypress verification timed out in case you also get this. So you can increase the time out. And here, if you just search for this Cypress verification timed out, you will get a direct uh, link. This is a Stack Overflow article that shows what changes you can do. So if you get this, you can say, there is a file where you can change this. So you can see in the node modules, Cypress, lib task, you will have this file called verify.js. So if you go to your project folder, you will get a folder called node modules. And as I said, all the node module that we will now add will get added to this folder, which is inside the project and not globally on the system. And if you go to node modules, you will see a Cypress folder. Under Cypress folder, you will have to go to lib and tasks. So here is the lib folder. Here is the tasks folder. And then there is verify.js. This is the file which has the timeout. You can open it with any editor. And you will see this 30,000, or you will see this option verify test runner. Uh, let us just search for this. Yes, it is here. And you can change this to a higher value like 60,000. This is in milliseconds. So 30,000 means 30 seconds. You can change it to something like 100,000 and then run the same command again. Or before changing this, before making any changes to this file, just try to run the Cypress verify command again. So sometimes the first time it does not work, but the second time it works. So I'm running this command again npx cypress verify and let us see if it works this time then it should be fine otherwise we will update the timeout yes you can see this is done and it says verified cypress so now we are good with cypress uh, next step is we will open cypress so we will run the command npx cypress open and this command will also create the Cypress project structure for us. So let's do that. I will say, uh, let me clear the screen. I will say clear, clear the terminal screen. And I will say NP X Cypress open and hit enter. And now you will see a Cypress project structure will get created in under your project folder. And it will also start the Cypress app. So this is now starting the Cypress app. So here you will see, we have got this Cypress app and you can see this file edit all these menu. Then this is our project, Cypress project one. This is the version of Cypress. There's a link to documentation. Uh, then you can see there is a E2E testing and component testing, which is a new section added. And just in case you want to see what is the difference between each type of testing, you can click on this link. This will show you what are the differences. So component testing is when we have to do individual component testing, like how does uh, you just want to do kind of a uh, testing for one component. And this is an end-to-end testing. So I will click on E2E testing. And here are the configuration files. So we have got cypress.config.js here you can see all these details this is the cypress config for e2e testing then we have cypress support so you can see you will have a cypress folder and then you will get a support folder in your project at this time if you go back to your vs code and you will see there is a cypress folder created under this folder you will see all these fixtures support e2e.js commands.js so all this you will see let us go back to the cypress app and you can see all these details here so it shows you all this i will click on continue and it is initializing all the configuration files and now it is asking us choose a browser for e2e testing you can select any of the browser and say start e2e testing i have selected chrome 
So it will also create a demo test for you. And if you want to add some example uh, specs, you can do that or just I will go with create new empty spec. So here you can see if you click this one, it will generate some example specs that you can check and you can see how does Cypress uh, creates test. You can see the test coding or this will create an empty spec. So I'll just go with this one for now. And this is the naming convention. Uh, we give the name of the file and then we say .cy.js. You can change this naming convention, but as of now, this is what is used. I will say create spec. And this is just an empty spec or an example spec, which is going to this example.cypress.io. Now do not worry, I will show you from scratch how to create all these blocks and all these tests. This is just for example, I will say, okay, run the spec and it will start execution. So it is running, this is the Cypress test runner and it is running that particular spec for us. So it is, it has gone to this Cypress example.cypress.io and you can see everything is fine. So it says passed and it shows us all these details here. Everything is fine and this is how it runs. And now if I go, go here, you can also see all the browsers. This is what I showed you initially that it will detect all the browsers on your operating system and you will have option to select any of these. Now Electron browser uh, comes along with Cypress. So that's why I'm seeing Electron here. And then Chrome and Firefox, I already have on my system. That is why I'm seeing Chrome and Firefox. So I can see, I can run on any of these Electron, Chrome, Firefox, or in case you have any other browsers on your system and it is supported by Cypress, you will see all that there. Okay. So this time I'm running on a Firefox browser. So you can see the same uh, steps here as well. So this is running fine. Okay. Now I'll go back to my VS code. And now if I go to my Cypress folder, here you can see you will have all these. You have a Cypress folder, then we have some subfolders, we have a downloads folder, we have fixtures. Fixtures will be used for files. I will tell you this later. We have a support folder where we have some uh, commands and uh, all these configuration files. This is the Cypress configuration file. This is package.json. This is package.log.json. I will tell you about these later. Here, we are more interested in this folder that is E2E where we have our tests or where we have our test files. And this is where we will create our test files. So if I have to create more tests or more test files, this is where I will create it. And if I go to cypress.config.js uh, here, uh, if I see, yeah, if I go here, e2e.js, you can see all these options are here. And I will tell you more about all these configurations and how do we add and update configurations. So we are done with our Cypress project setup. Okay. So with these steps, I believe you have your Cypress project ready. And now we will start the interesting part. We will now create tests in Cypress. We will run the test. We will see the execution. We will see how can we, uh, you know, see all the logs in the Cypress test runner or the Cypress app. How can we debug? How can we find and locate objects? So all that we will do. So we will start with our uh, first test. And before that, you can uh, take the Cypress quiz on my website. So if you go to the website, automationstepbystep.com, you will see there is a section for quiz here. So you can go here and you can see the uh, Cypress quiz. Uh, let me show you. Yes, it is here. Cypress quiz and here you can find Cypress quiz one and two at this point. Once you have completed until here, you can get, do the Cypress quiz one. And then after a few more topics, we will do uh, Cypress quiz two. So you can take, do the quiz and then we can 
go to the next topic so once you have done the quiz we will start with the next topic which is the first test how to create the first test in cyprus so uh, before we start with our first test um, i will also tell you that at your time whenever you are watching this video you can check the the latest cyprus project structure so sometimes there are some updates there are some changes and there can be some updates in the project structure or, or the folder structure or the naming conventions so if you go to if you go to and search for cypress folder structure or project structure you will go to this link yeah writing and organizing tests it will take you here and here you can see the folder structure so this is the folder structure so under the e2e this is for javascript and typescript so under the e2e folder you will see all these files you can have all this for component under this is for e2e testing this is for component testing these are the files you will have and then you can see how do we configure the folder structure the spec files the naming conventions fixture files which are used for files uh, which are used whenever you have to upload download read or write files or use any files so this is how the folder structure or the project structure will be and you can always check what is the latest structure at your time so you can check this you can see as of now we have the e2e folder and we have all these folders and files here like this start okay so here step number 1 is we will create a test file under the cypress folder and we have to go to our e2e folder here under our cypress folder there is e2e folder and this is where we will create all our test files and i will go here you can do a right click here and say new file or you can just select a folder and click this icon to create a new file and here i will give it i can say test1.cy.js this is the naming convention we give so this is the file we have created and as of now we will be doing all this in js that is javascript now at the top we can mention this reference types equals cypress and this will help us to do the code completion from the cypress library so whenever we use any cypress commands it can help in code completion however with the latest version of cypress this information is already mentioned in the configuration file uh, that is here if i go to the cypress config.js file so this configuration is already mentioned here so it should be okay even if you do not give this otherwise if you want you can just mention at the top with uh, three times the forward slash and you can say reference types equals cypress and this is how you can mention it after this we will need a test runner and cypress uses mocha which comes inbuilt with cypress so we do not have to uh, separately add any test runner it will have mocha inbuilt so we can write our test functions and to write a test function we use the it block so we say it and then we give the brackets here we can give the title let us say uh, within quotes i can give the title i want to search something on the google home page so i will say let us say google search and after this i will give a comma and i will say function and a bracket start and stop and then after the start and stop bracket of the function i will give a curly bracket start and stop and if i want i can move this to next line so that we get this space for writing our test now this is one way uh, you can also uh, to create a function you can also just say here the other way is you can say 
you can give a bracket and give this equals and arrow symbol or greater than sign. So I can also use this. This is another way of writing or creating a function. So this will also work. Anyways, will work. If you see the example, uh, you can see this it block here as well. If you want, you can copy it from here. You can also see a describe block, which is for grouping multiple tests. We will learn about this later. It is it has a similar syntax as the it block and multiple it blocks can go inside a describe block. This is for grouping. We will have a session for grouping. As of now, I have created a very simple it block and we can write our test here. So I will say CY. CY is the Cypress command, which has all the Cypress methods. And I will say to visit a web page in Cypress, we say cy.visit. And then within brackets, within quotes, I will give the link. So I want to go to https google.com. So this is how I can create the cy.visit. So this is how we do it. And we have created this test. Now to run the test, we will open Cypress and our Cypress is already here running. Uh, let me close this. I will close this and I will run it again. I'll go to the terminal and make sure that you save. You can press control S or on Mac, you can press command S and I will go to the terminal and run the command npx Cypress open again. And this will open our Cypress app. And then we should be able to see our new spec file. So it opens the Cypress app. And here I will go to this E2E -E testing. And I will say start E2E -E testing in Chrome. And this will open here. And you can see our test1.cy.js is here. In case you are not able to see, make sure that you have uh, put this extensions properly. If you go to the settings, you can see project settings and you can see here, this is how our uh, spec files should be named. It should be having, it should be under E2E folder. It can have any name and it should have a .cy and then .js or .tx or all these extensions. So you can also see all our settings as well here. These are project settings. You can see the device settings. You can select your editors for your code editing. And this is dashboard settings. We have not yet configured the Cypress dashboard. Then here you can see runs again. This is uh, this will show when we can configure our Cypress dashboard. And these are the specs. So this is our spec file. And here we have our browsers here. This is what we are using. And I will click on this test1.cy.js and it should start the execution. So this is running and you can see it goes to google.com and this is done. Here you can see our specs again. This is the spec which we have executed. And then here you can see at the top, one spec passed, zero failed, zero spec skipped. You can also check the preferences. And if you want to rerun, you can click this button to rerun. And here it also shows us the time taken. And you can see all the logs along with all the screenshots as well. So all this you can see here. Okay. So we are, we have created and executed our first test in Cypress. Now see uh, what happens if you make any changes to your test. Let us go to my, I'll go to VS code and I will change some, I will make some change here and I will save. I will press control S and you will see as soon as I saved, as soon as I made a change and I saved the test got executed again on itself. I have not executed it. It got executed again. And of course it will be a failure because the address we have given is invalid, which is this one. And that's why it has failed. It also shows you all the details, all the logs, the exact step and the code where it failed and everything is here. And the reason 
it re-executed as soon as I made the changes is because by default, whenever you make any changes, it will watch for, for the file changes and it will re-execute. In case you want to change this, you can add this configuration watch for file changes false. In case you are using Cypress version earlier to 10, this will go in cypress.json file. You will have a configuration file called cypress.json and there you can make all these changes. If you are using version 10 or above, then you can make these changes in cypress.config.js file. So let us go to this file. I will go to VS code and this is our cypress.config.js file. And here you can see we have got our E2E testing. So here I will say watch for file changes. I am getting this already here and I will make it false. And I'll give a comma here and I will save it. Now I will go back to my test and I will make the change again and I will save and you can now see. So as uh, if you make any changes in any of the config file, it will come again to the spec page here. I will click on my spec file and it will run, run the spec or run the test. Now, if I make any changes again to my test and I save, you can see it did not re-execute because now we have done the setting watch for file changes fall. So I will have to manually run it from here or, or rerun it from here. So now you can see, now this will be a failure. So I will go and change it again to google.com and I will rerun it. So this time it should run fine. Okay. So this is how you can make the changes. Now, uh, the configurations are very important. I will suggest that you check the Cypress configuration documentation. And here you will see everything about the configurations that you can do in Cypress. This will be very useful. So you can see if you are using uh, Cypress earlier to version 10, you can do, you can use cypress.json file. And then if you are using version 10 or above, you will use cypress.config.js file for doing all the configurations. And you can see here, this is for E2E testing. All the configurations for E2E testing will come under this E2E section. And you can see all the settings that you can do, all the configurations. We have client certificates, port, redirection limit, retries, watch for file changes. This is what we have already seen whether Cypress will watch and restart test. If there are any changes in your test file, uh, by default, it is already true. If you want, you can change it. We can also set the timeout. So default timeout is four seconds. That is 4,000 milliseconds. But if you want to change this timeout, you can change this. This is the time to wait until the uh, DOM based commands are considered or everything is loaded. This is the time that is exact time to wait for a system command to finish. Task time, page load timeout is here, which is 60 seconds by default. Response timeout. Then you can see all these folder and files. Uh, just in case you are doing component testing, I'll show you there is a example for component testing as well. So here, we will see some of these configurations as we go through these sessions. So here you can see for component testing, this is how the component section will look like. So as we see here, as we have this E2E section, we can also have a component section and we will have the all the configuration for component testing here. You can have both as well. So if I show you an example here, you can see we have a component section where all the configuration for component testing will be added. And for E2E testing, all the configuration will be added here. And for common configuration, you can add outside both of these sections. So this is also, this can also be done in Cypress configuration files. Okay. So we have done this step number four is done. And 
now to access the elements sometimes uh, you may want to just go to the first page of your application and after that you want to do the next actions that is uh, going to some elements locating the elements and doing some actions and if you want to do that once you have your test executed you will have this cypress test runner and we have our page here and you will see here we have this uh, option so let me show you you will see this we have got this icon here which is a selectors playground or it helps to select the element so you can click on this and now you can take your cursor anywhere it will find objects and locate the objects on your web page suppose i want to uh, type something on this search box so i will first get the locator i will click here and you can see we have got this cy.get you can also say use cy.contains and it is finding one unique match which is what we want they should not be more than one match and then uh, you can copy to clipboard you can print to console i will just copy it and then go to my code the test code and i will write it here i will paste it here so this is cy.get and then i want to type something so which is the type command i will use for cypress and i will type something here let us say automation step by step and then i will say i want to go back here and then click on this google search button so i will again find this element and here this is giving me this locator if i say cy.contains and here i search i say instead of hello world i will say google search and i will check if i am able to find a unique element yes it is says find found one element i will again copy this and go to my code and paste it and here i will say click and let us see let us see if it if this works i will save my code go here and rerun the test and let us see what happens so yes it adds automation step by step however it was not able to find the button or click on the button and let us see it may be because this search results is masking the button or yeah it is here anyways the button is also here so let us see did we add the click action i think we have to use this uh, that may be the mistake let us check again so it is typing automation step by step and yes it clicked on the google search button so this is now working fine now i can also instead of uh, having this step separately to click manually we just type and hit enter we can do that here so i don't want this step i will press control and forward slash on my keyboard to comment this statement comment this line and here itself i want to press enter so i will use curly brackets and i will say enter that means after typing this it will simulate the keyboard enter key press i will save and run my test again and let us see it enters automation step by step and hit center so you can see this also works just in case you want to see more you can say cypress keyboard uh, and here you should find all these options so let me see where are the keyboard actions uh, if you just say cypress press enter key you can find all these in the cypress documentation as well so you can see here for the type actions all that we can use so here are all the 
details. So you can use enter like this, escape, all these keys you can use. So you can see some examples as well here. So this is how we have used this enter. Okay. So we have learned all these commands. We have used cy.visit to navigate to a page, cy.get, and we can use any locators. And whenever we use dot, that is a class of that uh, particular object. If it uses hash, that means it is a ID. So basically, if I show you here, you can see it has used this dot glfif for the search box of Google. If you check, if you go to google.com, and if you see, this is the search box of Google. And if you do a right click here and say inspect, it will show you all the properties of this object. And here, if you see, this is the class. This is the class, which is GLFIF. This is what it has used. So every, all, every element, every object on a web page has some properties like class, or it can have something like name and ID. Based on that, we can create locators of that object. And that is what Cypress does for us. It has created, it has found the best possible and a unique locator. And that is what it has used. So you can uh, see this. Uh, this is how it gets the locators. We have learned the type command. We have learned the click command. So these are some basic commands that we have seen. Uh, if I talk about the Cypress test tunnel, you can see here, this is our Cypress test tunnel. You can here see the number of tests executed, the number of pass, failed, and skipped. Uh, here, you will also have the time taken by the test. And then here, you can see the viewport. What is the resolution it is testing on? You can see the browser it has used. If you want, you can change the browser from here. And here, you will see all the logs, all the steps here. You can see all our steps here. Along with the steps, you will also see, you can uh, pin the step and you can see here, you can see every screenshot. So you can see as we are typing automation step-by-step, step, every screenshot is captured and you can get it from here. So this is the Cypress test turner. You can see the status menu, test status menu. This is the URL you will see, the viewport sizing. This is the command log. You will see all the commands here. And this is the app preview section. So this is our Cypress test runner. We have also seen uh, how to access elements. So we have already seen how to use the selector playground. You can go here and click on this selector playground. And then you will have option to locate the objects. You can find any object. And you will have the locators created here. You can see how many matches are there. It should be one match always. You can also use cy.contains. And if I say, instead of, I use cy.contains for the videos button, you can see it is able to find a unique object, which is this one. So if I want, I can actually use this. I can go to my code. I can say, I can just type it here. I can paste it here. I will have to copy it again. I will copy and paste it in my code. And then I will say dot click. And now I will save and run my test again. So this should now also click on the videos link. And Yes, let us see. Yes, you can see it has clicked on the videos link here. So we can, uh, we have already seen this. Uh, you can also add the timeouts. You can add custom timeouts. By default, the timeout is four seconds. So let's see if I, if I go to my code and I do give some let us say here, I make some change. This is a wrong locator here. I will save. So this is wrong. Let us see what happens. I will go to my Cypress runner and rerun the test. And let us see. 
So you see here, after four thousand milliseconds, that is after four seconds, it timed out, and now it has uh, thrown the error. So it waited until four seconds, which is the default timeout. But if you want, you can always change the default timeout. So we can override or we can change this default timeout. I will go to my code, and here I will say. I will say here. I will give a comma after finding this uh, locator. After giving the locator, I will give a comma, and in curly brackets, I will say here. I will say timeout. Uh, yeah, it is here. Timeout, and I will give a colon, and I will set. Let us say I want to have it for five seconds, so I will say five thousand. This should be in milliseconds. And if I now save and rerun the test, it should now wait for five seconds before timing out and giving us the error. And you can see here, we have got five seconds timeout. So this is at a, a specific step level. But if you want, you can change it at a global level. So again, if you are using a version of Cypress before ten, you will make the change, or this configuration will be added in Cypress dot JSON and If you are using version ten or above, you will have to make this change in Cypress dot config dot JSON file. So you can go here, and I will say default command timeout, and let us say I make it to three thousand milliseconds or three seconds. Give a comma at the end and save. Now you can see here we have the timeout set at default level, and we also have the timeout set. Here at a command level. Now, if we have both, then this will take precedence or this will take higher priority. So, if I now save and run, it will still be five seconds. Let me check. I will rerun the test. And here we will see that the timeout happens again after five seconds. So, I will remove it from here, and then it should take the timeout from the configuration that is the global timeout so i will save and run again and this time you can see the timeout is 3000 milliseconds so this is how we can make the uh, changes in the timeout and we have already seen this we can access the elements by by using cy.get and using the locator or by using the text value by saying cy.contains so this is how we can use element locators and we learned how to interact with elements we learned how to add custom timeouts at command level and the global level and we used the commands cy.contains you can also have cy.wait so if you want uh, let me show you so i'll just change it back to the correct locator and before clicking on the videos link i will say cy dot wait and i can make it wait for any number of seconds i want let us say 2000 milliseconds so i will say uh, for 2 seconds it is 2000 milliseconds i will save and i will rerun the test so this time it will find the search box and then it will wait for 2 seconds and then it will click on the videos link and you can see here is the command to wait for 2 seconds so uh, also uh, you can check this interacting with elements page on cypress.io websites it will be very useful so if you just for search for cypress interacting with elements this is the link this is the web page it will be very useful very handy you can see all the different commands that we can use and different functionalities so this will be very useful if you have some time please uh, just go through it and you can also see visibility disability all these actions you can do animations scrolling actions coordinating actions all this you can check from here so this is how we can interact with elements in cypress and with this i believe now you have 
the basic information on Cypress. You have got the Cypress uh, project and you have created some basic tests and you have followed me and now you are good with the very basics of Cypress. I also have this quiz that you can take. I will have the link in the description of this video. So this will take you to this Cypress quiz one and you can uh, take the quiz and let me know your score in the comment section. I will love to know what is the score you have got after learning the basics of Cypress. And uh, I'll take a break. So this completes the first part of the Cypress masterclass. In the next part, we will go more deeper into Cypress. This is going to be very interesting. We will learn more and different features of Cypress. So please do hands on. Let me know if you have any questions. And I hope this all was very useful. Thank you for watching and never stop learning.